they were blessed with a warm winter in Europe, so they did not have to pull it. And now all of a sudden, they're looking at their numbers compared to last year, and they're saying, okay, we're in a comfortable position. No, you're not. Because this summer, you're not going to have any Russian gas, which last summer you did. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a much harder time getting to the same numbers by the end of October, when you're going to start needing your gas for next winter. The fundamental thing that has happened that has not been yet absorbed by, by the United States, neither the political circles nor the general consensus, mm. is we are now an energy superpower. And I would argue maybe the energy superpower. It comes with opportunities and with obligations, as we've been preaching to the rest of the world. You find for the first time that you have Democrats and Republicans kind of in agreement. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the first year of the administration, um, the Democrats did not want to allow hydrocarbons and the Republicans were in favor of hydrocarbons. One of the central problems is the lack of uh, energy literacy. People right. don't, uh, don't really understand that 17% um, of hydrocarbons go to produce and transport food. Carbon capture is not going to work without a price on carbon. We still a long way in the United States for justifying a price on carbon. Mm -hmm. However, in Europe, they've gone there and they have a price of carbon of $90 a ton, yeah. which is great, okay? The entire amount of carbon sequestration that can do be done in Europe based on that price of carbon is about 100 million tons. Mm -hmm. So we, we're dealing with 40 billion tons a year that needs to be absorbed. So carbon sequestration is going to play <clears throat> a very, very small part of this.